Okay, today we're doing a demonstration installing a standard duplex receptacle. So a quick note, uh, the NEC Article 334 talks about securing and supporting Romex cable or non-metallic sheath cable. Uh, the images on the right hand side, you'll see the different staples that are available to secure Romex to a 2x4 stud. But you want to make sure the cable is secured within 12 inches of every cable entry into enclosures such as outlet boxes like we're going to be installing today. Here's the tools we're going to be using today for this project. We got some Romex, the receptacle. This is a 120 volt, 15 amp receptacle. Of course, our box, staples, the cover plate, a hammer to install the staples, electrical tape to wrap around our screw terminals on our outlet, and a circuit breaker finder, screwdriver, wire crimper strippers and a non-contact voltage tester. So we'll get started by finding the breaker for this existing outlet that we're going to tie into and ensure we turn the power off first. So out in the garage, here's our circuit breakers. We just plugged in the transmitter. We're going to run this receiver over all of the circuit breakers two times. It'll beep and light up when you find the correct breaker. Yep. There's our breaker. We'll shut this one off. Remove that transmitter and we'll verify the power is off before we proceed using our non-contact voltage tester no power so we'll go ahead and remove this existing outlet the new outlet is going to be installed on the other side of this wall this is in a downstairs finished basement on the other side of this wall is a workbench that needs an outlet. So you see you have your hot, neutral, and ground wire coming in. And remove the existing electrical tape off the terminals. Just verifying the power is off for safety. Now on the other side of the wall, we'll go ahead and feed our Romex through that existing box. Make sure I leave enough sticking out of the wall. And then we'll run it up to the location where I want it, a little bit higher up on the wall on this two by four stud. You can see the workbench off to the right hand side of the screen. And I'm simply using these metal staples to secure the Romex to the two by four wooden stud. Here's our new box. You see it simply installs by driving those nails into the 2x4 stud. Wow! Now it has alignment marks so that your box isn't installed too far in to the wall. So in the event you want to install drywall, it'll line up properly with your drywall. Obviously in this workshop area, we're not worried about doing drywall. I'm just opening up the strain relief that grabs the Romex cable as you push it through the box. We'll feed our Romex through the new box. The NEC requires you want at least six inches of wire sticking out of the box. 
to me code. Again, securing the Romex. We'll strip off the sheathing. And this is solid copper wire inside here. It has a hot, a neutral, and a ground. You can buy Romex at your local home center. So there you go. We can kind of see what we're doing. Just trimming it off a little bit. I'm prepping my wire. That says loop. That's how you can quickly and easily bend the U-shaped loop in your wires so they will attach to the screw terminals on the new outlet. Just a little trick for you there. Woo! So the way to remember it, bright to white, brass to black. So the brass screws are for your black hot wire. The light silver colored screws are for your white wire. So first, attach your ground wire to the green ground screw. And always bend your loop and install your loop in the direction that you're going to tighten the screw. That way the loop does not come undone when you go to tighten your screw down. And I like to squeeze the wire together just to make sure it's nice and snug. Make sure your connections are tight. So again, the bright colored screws are your neutral. Your, your brass colored screws are for your hot. Hot is a smaller slot on the outlet. The larger slot is your neutral. Make sure they're snug. Now we'll connect our hot wire, our black wire. See as we tighten the screw. There we go. And it's good best practice to always wrap electrical tape all the way around your, your screw terminals when you install switches or outlets for safety. Neatly tuck your wires in. attach the new outlet to the new box. Then we'll go ahead and install the cover plate. And our work done is done on this side of the wall. We'll go back around to the other side of the wall and make our final connections. So back on the other side of the wall, we'll prep our wire. Always check with your local authority having jurisdiction in your area to see if installing a new electrical outlet requires a permit or not. Every municipality is a little bit different. So remember, every outlet needs a ground wire connected. So what I'm doing is I'm going to create a pigtail to attach to the existing outlet's ground screw. That pigtail will then attach with the wire nut to the ground wire coming in to this box from the circuit breaker panel, as well as that third ground wire coming in to this box 
from the new outlet on the other side of the wall. So we have a total of three ground wires being spliced together in this box. Ideally, you want to use like a pair of lineman pliers to, you know, pre-twist those solid copper wires together. I didn't have those on me, so I had to cheat and just use the wire nut, but it got it done. So again, you can see we got three ground wires together. We'll prep our neutral wire and our hot black wire. Now, these outlets have backstab connections. I don't recommend using those. I recommend using the screw terminals. It's a much more uh, solid connection, the screw terminals are. I think the screw terminals are safer than just doing the back stab. That's why you'll note here I'm using the screw terminals. And so I hope this makes sense that this existing outlet you can see is what's providing power to our new outlet that we just installed on the other side of the wall. Prepping our hot wire, again using that little loop trick. brass to black, right to white, it's one way to remember it. And then again for safety we're going to wrap some electrical tape around all of our screw terminals. Especially if you're working in a metal box, it's even more important to wrap electrical tape around your screw terminals. And these nuts you'll see me put on the back side of the mounting screws. The reason for that, whoever installed this outlet box originally installed it about a quarter inch too deep. So the outlet was sunken a bit by a quarter inch. So previously I had to fix that by installing those nuts as spacers. So the cover plate is flush and even with the outlet face. Just FYI. Little trick for you. So if you ever have a sunken outlet, that's an easy way to fix it. You can use washers or small nuts as spacers to bring that outlet out flush like it's supposed to be with the cover plate. Install our cover plate. So again, you can see here the cover plate and the outlet are properly flush with each other. I recommend labeling the receptacle with what circuit breaker provides power to it. Turn your breaker back on and check your new outlet for power. I hope this information helps you. Please like, share, subscribe, Leave me a comment and thanks for watching.